What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you were new to the channel, I am Gold Pony and today we are in the new 2020 Chevy Traverse. I love the Traverse. The reason I am a big fan of this one and I'll get more into it as the video goes on, but the space on the Traverse is among the best, if not the very best when it comes to mid-size SUVs. So this is definitely one to consider if you need a little extra space. So what do you say? Let's just jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so there will be several different trim levels, of course, available for the 2020 Traverse. First one being L starting at $30,995. LS starts at $34,095. LT cloth for $36,595. That is actually the one we have today. LT leather starting at $40,295. RS for $44,795. Premier starting at $46,995. And lastly, the high country, which will start at $52,095. And of course, with all that being said, that was pricing all for the front wheel drive setup. If you wanted to add all wheel drive, you can for every trim level, but the L trim level, but for all other trim simply add $2,300 to any of those prices. Now, but so then to simplify things a little bit, regardless of trim level, power plan is actually going to be the same this year for the 2020 Traverse. Whereas last year you did have a couple different engine setups available for this year, standard across the board will be a 3.6 liter naturally aspirated V6, putting out 310 horsepower at 6,800 RPM, 266 pound feet of torque available at 2,800 RPM, power sent of course to front wheels or all wheels through a nine speed automatic giving you mpg numbers 21 in the city 27 on the highway for the front wheel drive 20 city 25 highway for the all-wheel drive and i did want to also mention there is an auto start stop system that comes standard as well meaning when you're stopped at a stop sign or a red light as i just was the traverse will automatically shut off helping you save a little bit extra mpgs there as well so that's always nice but so overall in case you were curious zero to 60 time comes in at 6.5 seconds for the 2020 traverse with the time Top speed of 130 miles per hour if you really wanted to push this family SUV. But so now having said that, what do you guys say? Let's do a quick little acceleration in the Traverse and see how quickly we can get this one up to speed. <laughs> Wow, not bad, not bad at all. <laughs> Definitely not gonna have any issues with merging onto the highway. And again, I actually did have it in two wheel drive mode. I'll get a little more into that later. You can adjust some of the settings there, but if I were to put it in all wheel drive mode, of course, acceleration might be a little better as well because you wouldn't be spinning or anything like that. Not that I was spinning, but let's just say the Traverse definitely pulls pretty hard. But so then to go along with that acceleration, braking is equally important. And so as expected, you will find four wheel disc brakes on the 2020 Chevy Traverse. Reverse. As far as the braking feel goes, I actually do like it. No issues with the braking feel, no brake pedal delay or anything like that, at least in the Traverse, so that's nice. Touching on suspension and handling a little bit, as I previously mentioned, there are actually some off-road drive modes. There's actually a circular dial just kind of behind the shifter there. You're going to have two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive mode, and off-road mode, and also a tow and haul mode as well, in case you wanted to go that route. But so essentially, that's going to adjust things like the shift points, the throttle response, and the transmission settings as well, just for a little extra traction of course but continuing on up front you will find a mcpherson strut front suspension with the stabilizer bar in the back an independent five link rear suspension and as far as the steering feel goes it feels as expected no issues there it's definitely not the heaviest steering feel but it's not the lightest either, so I kind of do like it. It's a happy medium, I guess you could say, for the Traverse. Ride quality is definitely nice as well. Absolutely no issues there. Not too much cabin noise coming in either, so no issues with extra wind noise coming in for me at least, so that's also good. And touching on rear visibility, honestly, for as large of an SUV as this is, I really don't have any issues. There are some third row headrests that protrude up a little bit, but the good news about that is if you don't have anybody in that third row, you can actually fold them down for much better visibility as well. So overall, I am quite happy actually when it comes to visibility. The only thing, only constructive criticism, I guess you could say with the 2020 Traverse is I would not have minded if they had an available head up display projecting your speed onto the windshield. That's a little better forward visibility, of course, but it helps you keep your eyes on the road a little bit better. So that's definitely a nice option to have. One more thing I almost forgot when it comes to that rear view mirror. If you went with the RS Premier or High Country trim level, there is a rear camera mirror. First time I saw that was on some Cadillacs, but 
Essentially what that is, when you flip the button just below the rear view mirror there, it's actually going to display a camera within that rear view mirror. And you guys may be wondering why exactly do I need that? This is nice if you go on long road trips and you pile all your cargo up to the top of the ceiling in the back there and you can't see anything out of the rear view mirror. The rear view camera within that mirror is actually on the outside of the Traverse so therefore you can still see what's behind you even though you have stuff piled up to the ceiling. So that's definitely a benefit for this one, especially in an SUV going on long road trips as expected probably. But so anyways, let's now touch on some more new things about the Traverse. I already touched on the deletion of an engine setup for 2020, but now let's get into the colors a little bit and the exterior overall. And so if you were curious, there are actually three new colors available for the 2020 Traverse. First one being stone gray metallic, which is kind of a tannish color. Also black cherry metallic and midnight blue metallic. So if you were one of those people that want the newest colors out there, those are your three additional color options for the the 2020 Traverse, but looking up front, there is a large front grille that will actually differ slightly depending upon the trim level of the Traverse. Lower trims are going to kind of find a more of a black front grille, and upper trims are going to be more chrome cladded, meaning chrome horizontal bars, really. But to the sides, HID headlights will come standard. They will, of course, come with the automatic feature and LED daytime running lights as well. And if you wanted LED headlights, simply go with the Premier or the High Country trim levels. But now for one of my pet peeves about SUVs, when it comes to the ground effects or the lip kit kind of around the bottom part of the SUV, you will find a black plastic front lip and side skirts for all trims, but the Premier and High Country trim levels. Those two trim levels are going to give you a body colored front lip and body colored side skirts. Makes for a little better appearance in my opinion. One of my little pet peeves I always like to mention, but make your way to the side. Now, roof rails will come standard on the LT cloth trim level and up. Rear privacy glass will come with the LS trim level and up, meaning you do not get it with the L trim level. That was kind of interesting. Heated power adjustable side mirrors will come standard for all. Body colored side mirrors, though, will come with the LT cloth trim level and up, and you will find integrated turn signals again with those same trim levels. Looking down a little bit, Traverse lettering can be found spelled out on the front door, just like all of Chevy's SUVs, really, whether it be the Tahoe or the Suburban or whatever. And take a look at the wheel setup. 18-inch aluminum alloy wheels will come with the L, LS, and LT trims. However, if you want with the RS Premier High Country, you will find 20-inch aluminum alloy wheels. And of course, there are plenty of optional wheel setups available if you wanted to go that route. But now swinging around to the back, rear spoiler with the integrated brake light will come standard just underneath of that a rear window wiper. LED tail lights also standard across the board. Well done Chevy for that. When it comes to the bow tie badging back there, you will find gold badging for all trim levels, but the RS trim level, that's going to give you plenty of black accents, including that bow tie badge, of course, back there as well. But just below it all, perhaps one of my favorite parts about the exterior when it comes to the Chevy Traverse are the exhaust outlets. Dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips will come standard, but they're very high performance looking exhaust outlets, a little larger of a setup than you're used to seeing on an SUV. So I do appreciate that. And as always, you guys, here is that exhaust clip. So, but now since we are around back to open that rear hatch, you can simply just lift up underneath or simply use the key fob and that is going to open up for you. And to close it, there's actually one button on that rear lift gate. Simply press that and walk away. So quite convenient there. And by the way, that power lift gate I should mention is for the LT leather trim level and up. It is optional on some of the other trims like the LT cloth that we have. Hands-free lift gate is going to come with the premier and high country trim levels. But once opened up behind that third row comes in in an impressive 23 cubic feet. Feet. I say impressive because comparatively speaking, the 2020 Explorer that just released 18.2 cubic feet behind that third row, 2020 Kia Telluride at 21 cubic feet, Honda Pilot 16 cubic feet, so quite a bit larger than all three of those. Also back there though, behind that third row, there is in-floor storage to be found, so quite a bit of extra space there as well. But once you fold that down behind that second row, that's going to come in at 57.8 cubic feet. And with all rows folded, here's the really impressive number here, in my opinion, 98.2 cubic feet. That is very impressive for a midsize SUV. Again, comparison's sake, 2020 Explorer comes in at 87.8. Telluride comes in at an even 87 cubic feet. 2019 Pilot comes in at 83.9 cubic feet. So 
beats all of them once again. So that is what I first mentioned when we started this video, the 2020 Chevy Traverse, and I guess the other Traverses as well. There's definitely a quite a bit of cargo space available in this one. That's my point here. But as you guys can see, I had plenty of room to roll around and sleep in the back, even if I wanted to. So that was pretty cool. But make our way to the rear leg room. That third row is going to come in at 33.5 inches. So for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Also, plus side to the Traverse is there are three seats in the third row. So some three row SUVs have two. So I did want to mention that as well. Also, when I was sitting in that third row, I did find USB charging ports, even for the third row passengers. That's pretty cool. Along with some cup holders as expected. And making our way to the second row, 38.4 inches of rear leg room. Again, six feet tall. This is how much space I had. Also wanted to mention though, if you wanted to go with that bench second row, as opposed to the captain's chairs that you're looking at right now, the eight passenger setup is gonna come with the L and LS trim levels. The captain's chairs is gonna be optional for those. So, well, we do happen to have them. So that's kind of cool, but heated rear seats are gonna come with the premier and high country trim levels. And perhaps when it comes to some room for improvement, as far as the rear seat passengers go is, I wouldn't have minded seeing some optional rear sun shades as far as the side windows go. So that'd be kind of cool to keep the sun off the newborn faces when they're in the second row so but anywho if you were curious the rear ventilation is actually located on the roof so that all three rows stay comfortable but then make our way to the front seats cloth seating will come with the lls and of course the lt cloth trim level as expected leather seating is going to come on all other trim levels basically power adjustable front seats lt cloth trim level and up heated front seats come with the rs lt leather and up Heated and ventilated front seats come with the Premier and High Country trim levels. And again, with those two, you will find memory settings as well. Then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping, and it will come heated for the RS Premier and High Country trim levels and leather wrapped actually for the LT cloth trim level. You kind of would have expected to find a urethane steering wheel with the LT cloth, but I'm kind of pleasantly surprised that they made that leather wrap. So that's pretty cool. But when it comes to the startup, let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Chevy logo on the one side, and when you flip it over, lock, unlock the button to pop the rear hatch, of course, and that circular button in the middle. That is actually your remote start, which is going to come standard on the RS LT Leather Premier and High Country, optional on some of the other trim levels like the LT Cloth, for instance. But once started up, when it comes to that gauge setup, tachometer is on your left, speedometer is on your right. There is a small digital display front and center there to control what is on that digital display. There are steering wheel mounted controls on the right side there. So quite a bit of stuff you can scroll through actually. When you need your next oil change, there's a digital speedometer. Of course, your trip information, tire pressure information, average fuel economy, and a bunch of other stuff as well. But Touching on overall interior quality, as I previously mentioned, tri-zone climate control comes standard for all trim levels. And again, the ventilation is on the roof. Universal home remote garage door openers essentially come with the RS LT Leather Premier in high country. It's optional for some of the other trims like the LT cloth we have today. Wireless phone charger comes with the Premier in high country trim levels. Dual panel moonroof comes standard with the high country trim level only. And overall, when it comes to the interior of the Traverse, I found it very purposeful. It's definitely everything is found where you want it to be. Right in front of the shifter, you have plenty of charging ports, 12 volt power outlet, two USB charging ports, and one of those little circular things. I can't think of it now, but also a tray just below that as well. There is an electronic parking brake that comes standard, so there's not going to be anything that you got to slam your left foot on here. Just behind everything, there is a center box that is quite large. There's a little tray in there you can take out if you wanted to, but it actually does go down pretty deep in there as well. So that's quite nice. But perhaps my favorite part, making it look a little more high end in the Traverse, is the brown stitching found not only on the seats, but just above the glove box on the doors and specifically the center armrest. It definitely looks good. That center armrest is leather wrapped with the brown stitching. Uh, I don't know, it just makes it look more high end looking. I'm definitely a fan, but let's take a look at the tech display now. 7-inch color touchscreen display actually comes standard with the L, LS, and LT cloth trim levels. 8-inch color touchscreen display comes standard on all other trim levels, but either way, actually, you get Bluetooth and audio streaming, as well as Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, meaning if you have a smartphone, simply hook it up to the Traverse, and you have free navigation along with the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs up there as well factory navigation system if you wanted it comes with the rs premier and high country trim levels and of course you can check out your radio settings up there too and by the way when it comes to the sound system on the traverse you will find six speakers if you go with the lls lt cloth or lt leather trim levels 
However, if you want with RS Premier High Country, you will find a 10 speaker Bose sound system with a rich bass subwoofer, but that is not the one we have today, unfortunately. We do have the six speaker sound system, so what do you say? Let's turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. It's as expected. No, it's not too bad. I mean, six speakers, honestly, unless you're like a hardcore music kind of person, then you can go with the 10 speaker Bose. But for a family SUV, that's plenty. That's more than enough of a sound system for the Traverse. But then last thing on the tech display I wanted to mention with this one is when you do put the Traverse in reverse, you will find a rear view camera letting you know who or what is behind you with a couple different views as well, might I add. But as always, that is going to lead me into safety. And so when it comes to safety, you will find front side and side curtain airbags. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also back there, rear child door locks. And another thing I always like to mention with Chevy, something called teen driver mode. It essentially prevents your teen driver from turning off any of the safety features doing burnouts or whatever. And if they do happen to turn it off, it actually saves that in the system so you can then check it and kind of then confront your teen driver asking them what they've been doing lately. But Nonetheless, continuing on, lane change alert with side blind zone alert comes with the LT Leather RS trim level and up. RS trim level and up will also give you lane keep assist with lane departure warning. High Country is going to give you adaptive cruise control if you were interested. And there's a ton of other safety features coming with the RS trim level and up, including following distance indicator, forward collision alert, front pedestrian warning, and a 360 degree camera system. And so, but anyways, you guys, that is about it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like the video and subscribe. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there, and I will see you guys in the next video. Stay gold. I really, really like the smell of this traverse. That's why I'm gonna buy it. It smells so